How long shall I wait for your love, little mama? Nimengo jasana baby, na nimekwama. I may just find another little mama. Nimengo jasana baby. So yes, everyone. Yesterday I was watching a video. It was a reaction video. It was more of a gossip video. It was more of a hate video. You know, with this reaction video, you really don't know how to draw the line between being a critic and a hater. But yo, whatever, whatever you guys label us, we accept it gladly. Now, I came across a Nigerian lady who was talking about Maro, but uh, you know, uh, her reaction was pretty much hateful. I didn't see her being critical. I... <laughs> okay, watch at Semetu, it was more of gossip. And uh, she actually touched on something. Um, she actually ta asked, uh, or rather one of her fans asked, uh, why does um, Aya Marwa and Dimu Yanko not share the same surname? Now, the reason why they do not share the same uh, surname is because uh, Dimu Yanko's father and Aya Marwa's father are not the same. So um, Dimu Yanko uh, is actually the stepfather to you know, Aya Marwa. So I really don't know what happened to Aya Maro's father. I can't really speak on that. I'd have to research on that. But I do know that um, Dimwango's father is not uh, the, the uh, is, is it paternal. Oh, yeah, he's not the paternal father to Aya Maro. He's the stepfather. Now, on this video, Aya Maro explains how he lost his eye and how his stepfather was actually very, very... Um, was actually one of the main reasons, not necessarily the main reasons, but uh, one of the main reasons the boy lost his eye because he did not take initiative to take the boy to hospital. Man, I think that's really, really fucked up. Um, I believe Ayamara has gone up to forgive uh, the stepfather and uh, move on from that. Not sure, not sure, I can't say, but you know, it's 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 it was pretty, pretty fucked up. So let's hear from Ayamara. Why I wear sunglasses. I wear sunglasses during the day and during the night. And today you're gonna see my eyes too. Raw. Like, not really hit, but I pushed him. I went like, beep, 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 beep. Let me take it a few seconds below so that you can start on the story and um, you guys can actually stop. everything you know just a small kid vroom, vroom, vroom. you know those yeah how yes you can go watch the full video on Ayamaro's channel but uh this bit i'm just uh reacting on the bit where he lost his eye and his stepfather's reaction to him losing his eye oh you 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 think you are a bus and in your mind you the driver because it's a dream job you want to have like a small kid so i met this guy on the road his name was juma Juma, yeah, but it's sad because this guy died some few years ago, and um, so when I met him, I was riding my bus in my mind and with the lead. So, so let's let's imagine, let's imagine this is the lead, okay? This is the lead. So I was like, Ooh. okay. So I just went and met this guy on the road and on my side, and I hit him. I was actually like. 11 or 12 years I hit him like not really hit but I pushed him I went like beep, 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 beep. you know I boom my hit one thing you should realize Juma was oh my god this is so African <laughs> this is so uh, okay Juma had a problem he was like crippled so his legs his legs were tangled they were like this so he used to walk like, like this like this so imagine those are legs, but his his. Uh, I'm using my arms to illustrate how he used to walk. So he used to walk just like this. The legs used to, yeah. So there are a lot of villagers over there making noise. You know, in here in my home, they have like uh, local liquor. It's called changa. It's if if you take if you take this this top, two of them you can't move. Google maybe Changa Kenya. You're gonna see it's super crazy drink. Yeah, it's it can take you like here in my village. It's crazy. So no, let's let's finish this story.
So when I knocked Juma, I knocked Juma and Juma fell down. He was a cripple. And he, so I was still moving because I told you like the bus never stopped. That was my imagination. So he yelled like, why, why did you hit me? You know, like, why? So, but he yelled in Swahili, my native language. So I looked back like this. What are you saying? Just, just like that, you know, still like I was still holding the like, and I think I went back like, like reverse. Then I went and looked at him. What are you saying? This guy had a slingshot. You know sling, the one that you kill birds with? The one if you see a bird, you pull, uh, you know? Sling, slingshot. Man, this guy, it was at night actually, it was like around seven, so I didn't see what he was doing. All I had was in my left eye, I had a big bum. See my left eye? I had a big like bum, like boom. And it hit me, it hit me, hit me really hard in my eye. And I tell you my friends, in, in a split of second, what I had was darkness like this. It was as dark as this. Actually, in my mind, I thought like my eye had, had, uh, had like come out. Like actually, actually in my mind, that's what I thought. So I cried, I was a young kid, I cried like, whoa, please help me. So, you know, I, like I was, I went blind like in a second, like, pa. So when I cried, I was like, hey, please help me. So people came, like they were asking me, what's wrong, what's wrong? I told them, hey, Juma hit me in my eye. Actually, this left eye, I think I have some, yeah, I don't know. I should use some, I should use some piece of cloth. But uh, Juma hit me on my left eye. Then I was crying like, wait, is my, is my eye here? Is my eye here? Is it, is it, is it right here? Everybody's like, what are you saying? I'm like, he just hit me. I can't see. When I close my other eye like this, I see darkness. So, actually it was where I, I used to live was next to Juma's place. Like, not, not where I used to live. Like, even where I used to live, it, we were like neighbors. We were neighbors, like 100 meters, the distance of 100 meters. But where Juma hit me, actually across the road was, I was on the road. So up the other side of the road, just, just there, like 10 meters, was Juma's house. So I went to their parents saying, oh, Juma has hit me. Juma has hit my eye. Look, it's gone. I can't see. Actually, as I'm telling you, I thought it's, it went like down, like, you know, like, you know, like from, it crashed, like, I used to think maybe I would be like this in my entire life, you know? But when I went home, so I was, I went home, I was crying, and I was 12 years, man. The following day, my mom, my mom was traveling. So my mom was traveling to go do exams, okay? She was studying, she was studying in the college. And the following day, she was traveling for two weeks. So when I went back home, my mom cried, really like, literally cried. And for those guys who have not seen my mom, you see my previous video, you're gonna see my mom. So my mom really cried and she was like, oh my son, like you know how she feels like, she feels helpless and actually we were very poor, like really poor, even going to hospital. Man, I'm telling you, being born in a village and in a poor background, like really, really poor, really poor, man. Like even $5 was like a big miracle. I know that was long time ago, $5 would have sounded like maybe, maybe $20 today, but it was actually like really, really, we were really poor, man. So, so the sad part of this story is I grew up with a stepdad. So my stepdad like really didn't care about me. So when I went home saying, oh, hey, Juma has hit me, I can't see, please take me to hospital. My stepdad responded by saying, it's you who has the problem. It's you who is the wrong guy. And the following day, my mom was going to school. So I was left alone at, in the house. I was crying, my, my eye was like tears every second. It was super red, like really red. Like really, you see like it looks red. I think that's really, really fucked up uh, what the stepfather said, man. How can you tell, oh, shit, listen. <laughs> listen, Banata Kamam Toto si Wako, man. Even if the child is not yours, you, you've married the mother, man. If you've married a woman who has a child already, then that child is your responsibility. Personally, would I marry a woman that has a child from a previous relationship? Fuck no. But if you're the kind of person who doesn't uh, care, 
if you choose to love this woman, then you choose to love the child that she came along with. You know, you can you cannot separate the you know you cannot separate a mother from the child. Neither can you separate a father from the child. You know, when you choose to love someone, you love them with their baggage. You know, and a child is not a baggage actually. So I think uh, personally, I always feel it's pretty, pretty fucked up how um, people actually get married to others, knowing fully well that they have children from previous relationship. But for some reason, you you have it in your mind that maybe in the long run, I won't have to deal with this child. No, <laughs> don't be stupid, okay? Don't be stupid. Don't go around marrying people who have children if you know you're not going to love them with their children. That's fucked up, man. Right now, so you can imagine this this way maybe 10 times. Like it was Personally, if it wasn't my child, I'd still take take them to the hospital. Whether I was a stepfather or not, and I was capable of doing so. Even the parents of the child that um even the parents of the child that did this to the kid. They should have taken initiative. So, But I don't blame the other kid who did this tomorrow. I actually blame the parents of that kid who did this tomorrow. You know, man, and it's funny how karma, you know, comes around. You know, it's funny how, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the parents, uh, so I had that guy died. But I'm pretty sure either one of the parents, or both the parents are pretty much still alive. And right now they see how successful this kid has grown up to be. You know, he's built his mama house, he's built um, himself a, ma a, mul a multi-million villa, he's just recently built, you know, a damn charity work for another, for a neighbor. You know, shit, man, life, shit. Life is weird, man. Life is really, really weird. Shit, life is really, really weird. Wow. And even the stepfather himself right now is not he living in the house that Ayamaro built for his mom. You know, I'm pretty sure the dude feels like an ass nowadays for what he did to this young kid. He probably he had shown if probably he had shown the young boy love, things would have been different. You get? Um so I also had the other the Nigerian YouTuber saying that Ayamara and uh, David Jr. don't get along that much, probably because I am uh, David Jr. Uh, anyway, let me not just not let me not even go there, because these are unproven, you know. Um, but if it's true that David Jr. doesn't get along with Ayamara, probably it's because maybe the stepfather showed more attention and love to his own biological son and hatred to you know his his stepson but guess who ended up being more famous guess who ended up being the breadwinner the family breadwinner so yo this should be a lesson to all you hateful motherfuckers out there man if you have listen even i if i have even assuming i have enemies if i have a problem with my enemies i'd never touch their children man I'd never show hate to their children. I'd always have an extended arm, arm to their children because children are pure, children are innocent at whatever age. You know, at whatever age. So just guess you've already, just guess you've decided, uh, you made the uh, initiative to marry person, a person with a child. How can you say you love the person when you don't love their child? Really, does that even make sense? Yo, and those people out there, those foolish and stupid people out there getting married to people and you see fully well that these people do not show love to your children. Why the fuck are you still in there? You need I don't blame the children in this scenario. I blame the I I blame the adults. You know, you cannot go ahead thinking with your, you know, let me not get personal, but yo, this, this was messed up. You somebody other people normal people would see me like this and their eyes would shed tears like their eyes would respond by you know like shedding tears. So man, I went I went to I stayed I stayed inside in my home 
because my mom had left, she was the only person who cared about me anyway because I was living in a family with a stepdad who didn't care at all. I, I hope he doesn't watch this video. But if he does, that's the reality of life. So, man, I really cried. I, I was just in the house for two weeks, not going in the hospital, man, it's pain, pain, pain. Just like that, I lost my eyesight. Just like that. I never went to hospital. I never... So when I tried going to hospital after I finished university, the doctor just told me, he put some light here, like, like a flashlight. We call it torch. Flashlight. He told me, can you see some light? I said, no. Then he told me, okay, I'm sorry. We can't help, you're blind. Just like that, I lost my eyesight, so I used one eye. So because of that, but the doctor told me, you have to be wearing glasses because you have to protect the other eye. So all the time, I have to wear glasses. All the time. Even if it should be here, I feel more comfortable because I'm like, man, let it be here than just me putting it. No, just me not having it. So man, that's why I wear sunglasses. And when I grew up, students used to bully me. They used to say, oh, your eye is for a god. You know a god? Yeah, guys, so if you want to watch the full video, please go on to Ayamaro's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you know, this video is from, I guess, three years back. So, you know, now this puts to rest those people who've been asking why Ayamaro does not share the same um, surname as Dimwango. They do not share the same father. Uh, yeah, so that Nigerian tea lady, that Nigerian gossip man, <laughs> please, you know, when you react to other YouTubers' content, please do not do it with hatred, do it with reason. I myself have an issue with Ayamaro, and I've mentioned it more than once and categorically said it's because of his punious uh, attitude, man. The guy is very emotional, he catches feelings too quick. That's my only issue with Ayamaro, but all in all, the, good, the dude is a good YouTuber, he's a great African, great African YouTuber. You know, but for him being a, a great African YouTuber, he should be on the levels of Kinawodemai and stuff. So, you know, it's, you know, the funny thing is these are like the guys who, not necessarily really the predecessors, but the well-known YouTubers in Africa. And it just boggles my mind to know that eventually one time, one day, someone else will just come out from the shadows, man, and you know, hit the levels of Kina Mr. Beast Zuko, 100 million plus views and stuff. So, yo, shit. Anyway, see you on the next one. Oh, before, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment down on the comment section below what more videos you'd like me to, you know, upload. Go also back to my previous video, watch those ones as well. Don't be a hater, press the subscription button, uh, the subscribe now button.